Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have the usual suspects, Mimi, the terrorist hunter Schmidt. How are you, Mimi? Great. How are you? Good, good. We got Tate. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Litchfield. What's up, Tate? Not much. Excited to do this live. It's going to be fun. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to go. You know, as you say that, I'm going to go live right now. Oh. Live on Facebook. Let's see if this works. And do that. We got the breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Hey, What's up, doing? Mike? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, uh, I'm trying to get this right here. Share it in a group. We've got the go giver, Jeannie Morum. Hello. Hi, Jeannie. How are you? Doing fantastic. Excited to go live. We're about to go live here. Um, hit next. Do that. Oh, hello, technician. Eric Peterson. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm good. 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 And last but not least, you know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Today's round table is sponsored by Flight School. Learn more about Flight School. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. So we had a couple questions from the live group and it's kind of cool. So uh, Jim Lala had a question and I think it's a really interesting subject because it kind of, it kind of pops up a lot. And his question was for the round table panelists was how long will you market on Craigslist or Facebook before you say, okay, it's time to go to eBay and, and just sell this property. So it's an interesting question. I know I have a strong opinion about it, <laughs> but I'd love to hear from the group. Mimi, what are your thoughts? I focus on my Craigslist and my Facebook sales and some properties sell quickly, some take longer, but if something's sticking around, I just I push it harder on Facebook and they all eventually sell. I haven't taken the time yet to go and get really good at eBay. So I just push it more on Facebook and they all eventually sell. So I'm just take longer. Okay. Um, I like that. I like that. Tate? Yeah, um, you know, we rarely take a lot of properties to eBay. Uh, it's not that I'm opposed to doing eBay sales. It's just eBay sales. I tend to get more cash deals from eBay, and my primary focus is always uh, the terms deals. So if I'm going to take a property to eBay, I, I know that when I'm buying it, I might be buying a specific type of property or in a specific location that's better for that type of uh, a deal. Um, so I don't say, I wouldn't say I have like a, a hard deadline that if it doesn't sell on Craigslist or Facebook by X date, then it's on the chopping block. Um, it's mainly on a case by case date basis, but if I ever get to the point where I'm tired of looking at a property, tired of marketing it, that's when I blow it out and I just want to get rid of it and make my money back and move on. That's when I take it to eBay. So I don't have a hard deadline for you, Jim. All right. All right. Fair enough. Zen master. You love eBay. You're like you and Jeannie are like, I think the only ones on the podcast that love eBay. I do. I don't know. I think the students become the master. Jeannie's really <laughs> good at eBay. She's got that, the right personality because you know you need to be able to ask uh, questions and, re and and keep contact with people because you know the problem with eBay we all know is these buyers conflate right that's why I always call it the, the I always remember forget the name of Star Wars the Cantina is that what it is and you go in with Luke, when they go in looking for Han Solo and you have all these people everywhere that's eBay so you're dealing with a lot of really crazy people and so communication is vital so anyway you kind of 
sprung that on you, Jeannie, because she's the go-giver and she's so good at communication. I told her from the beginning how good she'd be at that. Now, as far as, I think there's a deeper question here. I really do. And I hate to, uh, I hate to like segue, but I really do think that if you only have one or two parcels, then you're going to stress this out and you'll be like, okay, I need to do something. I need to get rid of this. I got to go to eBay. But if you have a lot of deal flow and you have a lot of properties, Others will be selling and some might take longer, right? But they're all going to eventually sell. So you're not going to feel pressured to have to dump this one property at a lower uh, price because you have deal flow. And <laughs> deal flow solves about. everything. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's the bigger, I think that's, so I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to look like I'm diverting from the question. I think that, you know, there's, oh, and the other thing is that, eBay is it doesn't always work this way. Hey, I got a property. I just want to get rid of it. I'm going to put it on eBay. Not every property is going to do well on eBay. It's almost like you have to go the reverse. What's selling on eBay? Go get some. It's like to really force your, you know, to force your property onto eBay won't necessarily bring you back what you hope. I love it. I love, I love the, the geeky logic of it, of reverse engineering the success of others on eBay and starting there instead of, you know, oh, I have a property that's not selling on Craigslist. I'm going to go to eBay. No, no, no. Go to eBay first, see what's selling, and go get those properties. Um, those are wise words. But are they wise, Jeannie? Do you want to confirm? Because you are on eBay. You know, I would only sell property that you get cheap. Um, and that's why, you know, Tate and Mike and are trying to kind of help me, you know, market in different areas. But I like eBay because I'm an um, adrenaline junkie. So I like to sell properties fast that are cheap. But I will always put it on there that in a way that I know I'm always going to double my money. So I always have. And I love to experience, uh, experience with um, or test the market. I've been kind of doing some interesting things on marketing. And I'm using some words that are kind of enticing. And I've had more people looking at my property and I'm ranked on the first page. Uh, so I, I kind of, I'm really enjoying that, just testing the market out. But for those that are listening, I would, I would not suggest putting a property on there that you've paid a thousand or so more dollars. I, I, I wouldn't do it because I would be afraid of losing some money. And I've, I've never lost money yet. Um, but, but like Michael was saying, if someone doesn't follow through, you're gonna be out that cost, what is it, $35 to list your property. So you have to be prepared for that. But yeah, I, I like it for the cheap property. Okay, what's your, what's your default rate? When I, when I say default, bidder wins the auction and then doesn't pay. Or I should say your deadbeat rate. 1%. 1%? Yeah, and I've really had a good, I've actually have a great time because I watch the bids I, because I'm an adrenaline junkie. I, I get such a rush off of that and I can't wait to get more land and I go for the cheap property. But after nightcap last week and I heard Scott Todd talking, Ooh, I got up my game, man. I, I, whew, after listening to him, ugh, the challenge is on. So I, I have to, I have to go big now. I'm, I'm, I'm playing too small. All right. I love it. I love it. Um, before we go to, the irascible Eric Peterson and ask him about eBay. Um, I do want to know, Jeannie, what words are selling? Because there's a great book that says words that sell. I don't even want to give my secret out yet, <laughs> but, but I will, I'll tell you. I'll tell you because you guys are awesome. Tell us one. How about, how, about, how, about your, how about one? How about just one word? Oh, I'm so embarrassed that I'm going to actually tell you guys this. I mean, but, geez, it's not I, like you're I, not going to troll your ads on eBay now. <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> I, I actually use the word sexy. Ooh. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and my, my bids doubled using that word. <laughs> that's wow. Awesome. And I hate to tell you guys that because that's like. No more. No more. I, I mean, look, I, I think, <laughs> look, it's, it, it's common marketing knowledge. Sex sells. We just didn't know that sexy property would sell. Well, you know what? what, this is my, oh, you know what? I, I believe in giving back because you never know. The, the universe will give back to you, you know? But I say, this is what my motto is. Buying land just got sexy. Buying land I, just got sexy. Bring sexy back. So I am trying to bring sexy back into buying land. Because I talked about that at boot camp, and I remember sharing that with 
with Scott that, you know, buying land is really boring and selling it is really boring. And because I'm an adrenaline junkie, I really want to make it exciting. I want to make it a great experience for people that are buying it. So, you know, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to try to find words that intrigue people and get them to read my listings. And it's been working so far. I, I love it. And it reminds me of uh, from boot camp, the, uh, when we do some of the interactive sessions, one of my favorite headlines was, I like big lots and I cannot lie. That, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I think, I think Scott was talking about that, you know, in the marketing and using words, play on words. And, and he got me thinking and I thought, you know, I, I, I really am getting into this marketing piece. So. No, it's great. It's great. Eric Peterson, what's, what's your rule of thumb about eBay? I love what's been said, but I, I think I kind of um, am in line with Tate on this one. You know, I, for stuff I put on eBay, generally I know it when I buy it. Um, you know, it's, it's a property. Uh, generally, it's a really cheap property. A lot of times it's in an area that I don't um, focus on. Um, so I just kind of buy it with the intention of, of putting it on eBay. Okay, great, great. So you, you kind of do what, what Mike and Jeannie do, does. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Um, Scott Todd, do you want the last word on this? Well, it used to freak me out. It literally used to freak me out when, uh, when I wouldn't sell a property. And it partly is because when you're new, one, you've got capital tied up on it. You're still not convinced that this is going to sell. You don't want to be left with something. You're, you're not committed. I don't mean that committed like you're not doing it. You're just, your brain is not necessarily there developed to say, eh, no big deal. This one sells, this one doesn't. And there's, I can tell you that over time, you become kind of um, uh, solid, if you will. Your, your strategy becomes solid that, like, I'm not going to necessarily race it off to, to eBay. It will sell. I'll get a buyer for it. I'll market it. I'll put it on the back burner. I'll come back to it. All of these things. And I think that when you do that, when you get to that point, you're like, you know, it's okay. I'm not going to race off to eBay and change my strategy. So I don't do that anymore. I used to take it like 45 days, 60 days. I take it off to eBay. But like Tate said, I don't really do that anymore. The best advice I ever got, Mark, in this bit is in this business. It's actually in the Land Geek Mastermind group. I'm gonna tell you guys how to see it firsthand because this shows you like that we all start somewhere. We all start with those newbie questions. Go, go to the Land Geek Mastermind group on Facebook. In the search bar, type in Scott Todd Land and Farm. Land and Farm all together. One word, Scott Todd Land and Farm. And what you'll find is you'll find a post that I asked back in November of 2014 when I was still like a baby land investor. And I'm like, help, I have, um, I have posted the ad on Craigslist. I renew it every two days. I put it on land and farm and I sent out neighbor letters. I've gotten two calls in the last two days. What's going wrong or what am I doing wrong? And I got two comments because the mastermind group at the time had like 30 members in it, Mark. And, right. and, uh, Number one comment was from a guy, Joe, Joe Atkins. You know, Joe's a great guy. And he's like, hey, I'm still new, but I'm following this one. Thanks, Joe. That helped me out. But then the <laughs> best advice came from Paul Mendel. Remember Paul? I remember Paul. Paul was like the, the what was he, like the moderator of the thing? He like beat you up if he, you didn't do the search button. He, he, he was the moderator, but he was also like the most resourceful of yeah. all. Like right. he's like, oh, wait, I don't have any money, but. I would just tie up this property and tell them I'm going to do due diligence. Didn't even do an option for 50 bucks, sent out letters uh, to the neighbors and then did a dual close and maybe like 10 grand for a few hundred bucks of neighbor letters. Right. So he comes on and he gives me the best advice ever. And I've taken it to heart. It says, and I'll, I'm not quoting now, but you guys can go read it. It says some move fast, some move fast, some move slow. That's the way it is. So basically he said, suck it up, get over it and move on. Just keep marketing. That's all I can say. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think also to um, piggyback on the point is uh, Phil Tudorici. So Phil was um, 
having a hard time selling some property. They just weren't moving fast. And the reason they weren't moving fast was that Phil had a certain number in his head in mind. And the market was like not caring what Phil wanted, right? And as soon as we made a little pricing adjustment, they flew off the shelf. And oftentimes you have, you can't, you have to go with what the market wants, right? The market doesn't care what you think it's worth. They care what they think it's worth and you have to make it irresistible. So I think, you know, I used to love eBay. I, I don't really want to go to eBay anymore um, simply because now I kind of feel like, I don't know, <laughs> sort of emasculated by Mike and Jeannie and their success. Like, why can't I sell on eBay? But now I know the secret. Maybe I will. But um, typically I've been, I, I just didn't have like the patience because I wanted to sell on terms and, you know, people would win the bid and then they wouldn't make the down and I'd have to resell it and I'd have to contact eBay and get money back. And it was a whole thing. It's just like the juice wasn't worth the squeeze for me. That being said, I'm not opposed to going back to it. Um, but I, what was my point again to piggyback on? You like eBay sometimes. I like eBay sometimes. I think ultimately, though, you the have market, to. The market talk and team. Yeah, listen to the market. So the if market. Craigslist and Facebook aren't selling for you, adjust your pricing. Don't necessarily just go to eBay, unless, of course, you want to follow the eBay strategy, which is the tried and true strategy of this is what sells on eBay, go and get that. But don't just start liquidating your properties on eBay because you think they won't sell on these other platforms and you know, not to plug Scott Todd, but there is another great selling platform right now called landmoto.com. Go there, wholesale it out There's, or land investors. Right. Um, you know, but the bottom line is I've been doing this full time since 2001. I've never been stuck with a piece of property. I've never not been able to sell a piece of property. So, and I don't like to talk about it because it sounds so ridiculous. I've never lost money on a piece of property either. But that just sounds nuts. Maybe, maybe you should lose money on one of them. So at least you can say I've lost money on one. It sounds a little ridiculous. I, I mean, I mean want, it. I'll sell but, you a piece of property for, for cost, I guess. Well, yeah. I mean, I but would I'd work still make money on the dock fee. Right. Okay, right. That's the problem is like, it's, it, Mark, I think that, I, I think that, a lot of times people, they get to the point where with the land, they think that, um, well, it's a bad property or the markets, the markets, uh, you know, it's something with the market, something with the tire kickers. It's not that it's the marketing. That's what it comes down to. Cause the market speaks to the marketing. I mean, you could have, you could have the greatest, uh, pro product out there, wh whatever it is. And if you're not connecting, like maybe it's the iPhone, like maybe, maybe, maybe you create a phone that's better than the iPhone, but if you don't market it correctly, it could be the greatest phone that nobody ever knows about. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta connect with the buyers in that market and you gotta figure out what's driving them, what's driving them for this property. And that's what I think is pretty cool is that every one of these properties is in fact, its own story. It's its own piece. Exactly. Exactly. Well, before we go to the Zen masters, uh, tip of the week. Um, I do want to field Greg, Greg's question on the official Land Geek uh, Motivation Wealth Creation Group, which by the way is a free group. Um, I feel like I'm having a hard time creating urgency with my ads on Craigslist. What are some suggestions to boost responses? Mimi? What would you do if, if you're Greg? He's having a hard time creating urgency with his ads. What are some suggestions to boost responses? I have to think about that, honestly. My VAs post my ads. Ah. My VAs come up with all my content. So I, I have to think about that a little bit. Okay. Um, Tate, how about you? Well, uh, you know, catchy headlines. I think people underestimate the importance of having a good headline. 
Um, the matter of the situation is people don't read anymore. I've said this time and time again. I've talked with hundreds, probably thousands of people, and they've contacted me in regards to a property and said, well, you know, I'll start, they'll start asking me questions about the pricing and the location, and all of that is located in the ad. But they still have to ask that questions anyways. And I say, well, did you not see it in the ad? And they say, no, no, I didn't see that part. And it's, so people aren't reading. So if you're not getting a good response on your Craigslist ads, you've got to come up with better headlines, in my opinion, and make sure that people understand the pricing, post in relevant areas, you know, back to the basics. If what you're doing isn't working, then you need to go back to square one and restart. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so, Greg, you know, before we go to the Zen Masters answer to this, I'm going to stop live streaming on Facebook, which then creates the urgency that if you want to hear the rest of the roundtable, you've got to download it on your podcast catcher, whether it's iTunes or uh, whatever it is. And you're certainly going to want to hear Mike's tip of the week. So for those of you live on Facebook right now, I want to thank you for joining um, Greg, I want to thank you for your question. Um, Jim Lava, I want to thank you for your question. And uh, I hope you and Catherine are getting some sleep with that new baby girl. And um, so, Mike, what's your answer? My answer, well, you know, urgency is, I'm not going to say, use the word sexy because that's genius. So I can't use that. <laughs> I think it comes down to volume, really, honestly. I mean, using something like posting domination volume. The reality is, I think of marketing, I say this every, all the time, so it's redundant, but it's like a parade, and you have a smile on parade, you throw a few ads out, your parade stops at like 10 feet, and the person who's going to buy your land is like 20 feet down the road, but you didn't put enough ads out, the marketing stopped, the whole parade stops, and they don't see it. So I, I, it's a volume game. I mean, you can come up with all kinds of nifty things to say, but at the end of the day, you're going to have a lot out there. You're going to be putting out uh, ads to get back deal uh, sales. I, I don't know what's going on on this round table that Mike is laughing. So, someone's making him laugh. Hey, hey, wrong. Tate, Tate is making him laugh. I see it. I see it. Tate, Tate behind the scenes is making Mike laugh. He's saying something. And... No. Uh, I was just looking because I think I sold the property. I'm smiling. So I don't uh, know what you're, yeah. I'm not even looking okay. at Mike. I, 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 I honestly yeah. didn't hear what Mike just said. Oh, bless they're, they're making like goo goo eyes at each other. Like, yeah, they are. Like, yeah, they, like, they, got like, the little, they got a little instant message thing going and, you know, yeah. they hit them. We do have a bromance. I won't deny that. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it either. You know, it's, it's fine. I love the guy. <laughs> All right. We, we, we digress. Jeannie. What's your advice to Greg as far as creating more urgency and getting more responses on his Craigslist ads? Well, that's what you need to do is you need to create urgency. So in your writing, you're, you know, explaining that this is it. There's nothing, there's not another property like this. This is it. They're not making any more pieces of property like this. And this is your chance to buy. So in your writing, it, it's creating that urgency and in your title. All right. Yeah, Absolutely. Eric, the technician, Peterson, what's your advice? I think, I think really it's, it's two separate things, right? Because with Craigslist ads, the, the way we draw people into those ads and get them to respond is the headlines and the photos. So to me, I think that's the first thing to look at, you know, are your headlines dynamic enough? Are, are people seeing those and are they standing out from all the rest and same with the photos and if if that looks just the same as everybody else is out there it's not a surprise that you know you're not generating leads so so that's number one and then i think it actually takes communicating with someone to create that urgency so you've got to have you know, a phone call, you've got to have, you know, a string of emails back and forth in order to be able to create that urgency because otherwise they don't sense it. You know, I mean, if, if you're just trying to create that in a static ad, it's not very realistic. So, um, so that's my thinking on it. I love it. I love it. 
Scott? I think Eric got it. Like, you know, I think that people, I think that people miss the boat when it comes to advertising. Advertising is not the place to generate the scarcity, right? Like the, the, the part about marketing is to generate leads. That's the, that's the thing. It's like, you got to generate the leads first. That's the people raising their hands saying, I'm interested. Great. Now we move them out of marketing into sales and in the sales component, now we're doing the things of creating scarcity. Like think, I always talk about marketing and like, Marketing is like dating. So like you don't, you're not in the bar and you're not like, you know, looking around for your, for, for, uh, you know, like a, a girl that you want to take on a date and you're not looking around and going, Hey, there's only one of me. You're not doing that. What are you doing? You're playing it cool. You're trying to get the phone number. You're, you're creating a conversation. When do you create the scarcity? It's not in the bar. It's on a date right? Like it's, it's after a series of dates, which are phone calls, it's emails, it's texts, it's all of this stuff. And that's when you, you propose, you don't propose in the bar on your first day, like not even the first date when you first meet them. That's not when you do this thing. You propose after you've dated a while, communicated. And what happens is either this person truly sees that you are a fine and then they, they want to marry you or they, they're like, this is not the right find for me. And then they're off on their way. And then you move on to somebody else, right? So marketing and sales is a lot. I, I think a lot about like mar, um, dating and getting married, that whole process. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it's funny because I'm so grateful that when I met my wife, there wasn't Tinder. And she's just going to look at me like swipe left. You know? Like there would, have been, there would have been a second date, basically. So, and a lot of it is just timing is everything. Gosh. So, you know, not to digress. Oh, swipe left. I'm thing. sure she wouldn't have swiped left. Those things you, I don't know. <laughs> you should see what I look like 20 something years ago. Um, I mean. You were jacked. I, w- I was jacked, but she didn't like that. <laughs> I was jacked. She, she likes me geeky. Oh my god. So we need anyway. to see pictures of jacked Mark. That's what we need to see. With the model. With, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll 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 like, try to dig them up. Just just one, right? Like that's all we need. We just need to see one because we hear about this, but you know, you know now I'm never gonna share it because it's, it's almost become like urban legend. <laughs> right. Right. Like, I just keep getting so bigger food. and more jacked as the years go on. <laughs> I mean, right. Mark, I, I used to be seven one, so, you know, <laughs> now, now I'm six feet. I, I don't know what happened, you know. Uh, that, getting the picture out might just, I don't know if this group was, I don't know if that's a winnable situation. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's Mimi. <laughs> it's winnable. It's not winnable. Especially with Eric Peterson. Like, do I really want to throw more wood on that fire? <laughs> yeah. I think Eric, like, you know, yeah. like store a copy of it and like put put it on t-shirts he wouldn't do that <laughs> no never <laughs> but you know what i think it's a perfect segue to the zen master mike zano your tip of the week a website a resource a book something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go right now improve their businesses improve their lives what have you got so this is really simple actually and scott i don't have to have scott Todd shut his uh, camera up for this one. Uh, and this is, I guess, a resource. And I'm, I don't know how many people on here have seen last week's nightcap, but Scott Todd definitively dropped the mic like over and over and over again. It was like a mixture between like Grant Cardone and Warren Buffett. Like he was just, if anybody has not seen that nightcap, now I know we bring a lot of silliness and we, we talk about land, but he just went off. And it, my, it was actually super inspiring and super informative. And if anybody out there has not seen that, you have to go watch that. I mean, that was, I think you would talk for like 45 minutes and it was not repetitive. It was all just boom, boom, boom. And it was just like jaw dropping people. You, know, I, you have to watch it. Wow. It was really good. Awesome. It was that good. Well, I'm, I'm going to go watch it. When night, night, the next night cap, is next night caps tomorrow night. This was last, was it Thursday night, Scott? I think it was Thursday night. Uh, last Thursday? 
you it was Wednesday, wasn't it? And Wednesday, then, yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. It 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 was just awesome. Honestly, it really was. I, I, and and all joking aside, it was incredibly inspiring. And uh, you know, I you know, I always say it, even though I'm older than him, he's my big brother in land investing. I'm like two months, or three months older than him. <laughs> Found it out last boot camp. Hey, Mark, could I add something? Sure. Hey, that we're talking about Scott. Well, Scott has challenged me about Facebook, and I have a problem with Facebook. But I and so I took it really seriously because I, I, maybe I really do have a problem with Facebook. But I found out I have a I have a problem with my phone. So I am really taking that seriously because I'm really addicted to my phone. Didn't realize it. I'd rather be on my phone than the computer. And so I dug into this a little bit, and I found a book on how to break up with your phone by Catherine Price. I love it. He was actually on Good Morning America the other day about tips on how to break away from your phone because of the distractions and actually it can cause depression as we probably already know. Well, anyway, so I'm taking this really serious. And so I have my phone outside of my bedroom at night. My phone is, instead of all the beautiful colors, it's black and white. So I'm doing everything I can to, to uh, keep away from that distraction of my phone. I think that's phenomenal because he challenged me and I, I took the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a little early to put up the banner behind me mission accomplished, but I will say that I am on, I'm almost on week two of checking email only twice a week uh, or twice a day. Um, the, the dopamine hit that I used to always kind of get checking things and cycling things and looking at things. I'm I'm really really have uh, broken away from my phone for the last almost two weeks. So I once it goes to like a month, I'll share my what I did and my journey on it. But it's, right now it's still premature. But I'm excited to share. But I in the meantime though, I think that's a great book to get too. Well, I'm gonna get uh, it. You know what? I actually watched our um, live streaming last week. You know. And I watched my eye movement and my eye movement went to my phone. So it was pretty humbling. And I, and I was actually just checking to see if Facebook was live on Facebook while we were going live. But, and I see that with other people when they're on their phones, like even out to dinner and stuff, the eye movements, it, people don't realize how they come across to other people and the perception that they give, that they're not paying attention. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll be out to lunch with uh, like, you know, buddy and he'll have like the Apple watch and what we talking of like, We'll get like a notification. Like, is not is what I'm saying not important? Am I not the EF Hutton of this relationship right now? You know, but we all do it. Um, but anyways, I, I think that's a great tip. So, Mike, um, what was that? Oh, look, at that. Look, at that. Oh, look at that. Remember that? It said, "Oh, my dad's a so and so," and he says, and the whole place would stop. Was that EF Hutton? That was EF Hutton. Yeah. yeah my dad's that's a old, old, old you know, That's old you know, uh, old reference that most likely most people who are listening to this podcast are too young to even get. So. So your kids say, my dad's a land investor and he says. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they say though that not just, sure, if you're looking at your phone or your Apple watch, people are going to feel like they're not as important, but they say just holding it. Because when I worked in the corporate world, I carried it everywhere because that's, I communicated with my staff so much that way. But they said, even if you walk up to talk to someone and you're holding it, it still gives that person the impression that you're not, that they're not as important. <laughs> yeah, no. And I'm, I've been really guilty of it. And uh, I've, I've really worked really hard on, on breaking this tech addiction, but it's a thing for sure. And, you know, you see the kids walking around hunched over like that, just that posture alone, like that, that does cause you to be a little bit more depressive actually yeah right. that's called yeah, that's called it's called tech neck tech neck yeah that's i, I read a the other day mark that said that if you if you put your head down like like this like like down you're just your head alone like when it's supporting your body weighs 12 pounds but when you put oh your head gosh. down like this it's the equivalent of 60 yeah. pounds yeah wow 60. Wow. That's right. So your That's neck will, your neck will start hurting. Huh. 
All right. Well, that's good to know. We're all stretching. We're all like, I know. Everybody yeah. starts, what's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what other podcasts are you talking about? Money, life, Facebook, phone addictions, and stretching all in the same conversation. We get getting engaged, and I, I feel like Scott proposed to all of us. Right? Getting engaged, <laughs> date bars, Tinder. We got it all right here. Like and sexy land. land. And sexy Our land. land. Sexy yes, land. This is not sexy, Jeannie. <laughs> this is the poo-poo platter. This is the poo-poo platter podcast. <laughs> we get a little bit of everything. Now I want Chinese. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners. And, um, and I, I want us to just say, like, you know, hopefully everyone's getting value. And if you are, please help us out. Um, do us a little favor. Simply subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. Um, again, just a reminder, learn more about flight school. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Speak to the Zen Master Mike or Dude Buddy Scott Bossman. Anyways, um, are we all good? We're good, man. We're good? All right, we're going to do this? Ready? One. One. Two, three, let's let freedom ring. ring. Oh my gosh. Much Mark, better with you and I. Mark, you and I were in perfect harmony there. <laughs> Which is pretty much how it is every day. I mean, we sounded like the heavens opened up, you and I, <laughs> the rest of the group here. <laughs> well, then why don't you guys sing like happy birthday together and let's see how you sing. We could. Whose birthday is we it? We could. Well, it's somebody's we birthday. Oh, I oh, oh, sorry. I've got a hard stop here, Scott. So i uh, got to take uh, off. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about the, the round table going too long anyways. So. Yeah. Well, we'll don't stop. worry. We'll start up next week's with that. Because it'll be someone's birthday next week too. <laughs> yeah. No worries. We're not yeah. afraid. Fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Is Whatever. that a good episode to have the baby pictures? We're doing birthdays. No, Mark, Mark's jacked picture is going to be there. Yeah, we want that picture. The, le the legend continues. The legend continues. <laughs> maybe I need to start. Maybe we need to start a movement on Facebook for that, like its own Facebook page or something. Yeah, you got to remember though. It's not, it's not like Mike Zeno jacked. Like it's not like firefighter jacked. It's like it's like early '90s jacked. It's not like today. Okay, <laughs> like if you watch like movies from the '80s, you know. Caddyshack. Like, Go yeah. look at it. It's so shocking. Yeah. There yeah, were like, normal like, people in the rude. movies back then. <laughs> like Tom Cruise and, and uh, Top Gun Jack, that kind of deal. Like MC Hammer Pants Mullet Jack. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 I can see Mark rapping in his parachute pants, can't you? Oh, those yes. Pants. Yeah. All right. Is everyone enjoying? You know, you know who's not piling on, by the way? Hey, because he doesn't know what person I think on the most. Are. Eric. Eric, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at Tate. He's I have not even some thoughts, but I'll keep you in I just Googled parachute pants. They look comfortable. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Especially when you were doing the break dancing and spinning on your back. That was the best. Like you, needed, you needed those things. Yeah, they look comfortable. It looks like I, I, feel, I feel like we should email, you know, like movies to Tate. They're like must-see movies. So he even understands half the references on yeah. our podcast. Like yeah. Fast Times at Ridgemont High would be one. Like <laughs> Breakfast Club. I've seen The Breakfast Club. Wait, have you, the Tate, have, have you, have you, it was all right. I mean, it was no Ferris Bueller. It was fine. Okay. Yeah. There's, that's a, that's, that's a classic. Groundhog Day. Kingpin. 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 Kingpin's a classic. With Woody Harrelson. Nope. About uh, you gotta watch that. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, what else have I seen that's old? Star Wars, the originals. Does that count? Oh. <laughs> uh, Indiana uh, Jones. Mark, shut him down. <laughs> All right, let's, let's not record it. Put him on you. It's, yeah. <laughs> this podcast is over. <laughs> this podcast has devolved quickly. All right, thanks, everybody.